Welcome to my channel, my name is Luis Ribeiro and today we're gonna have a closer look at the new monitor for BenQ, the SW272U. Before we dive in, BenQ is not sponsoring this video, but they did send this monitor for us to have a closer look and give my honest opinion. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my personal experiences and how is the process of using this BenQ monitor on my workflow as a professional videographer and editor. Let's see what's inside the box. One calibration report, one monitor 27 inch, one monitor stand, one base, one power cable with 1.8 meters. Might be silly, but I like the power cable because it's super sleek. It's very thin and doesn't have that brick, that big power supply. Doesn't take any space as well under my cable management space. So very good. One MDP to DP cable, one USB 3.0, one HDMI, one USB-C. And the USB type C, it's nice because we are able to charge our computer at the same time, so it's two in one. I personally like to use the HDMI because I don't like to leave my computer charging every single day, all the time when I'm editing. One warranty card, one shading hood for landscape and portrait and helps prevent unwanted glare and reflection. One wireless hotkey puck G3 and one quick start guide. The process to mount the monitor, it's very easy with only three pieces. The base and the arm is very easy to mount and didn't really take much space on my desk. When I'm using the HDMI or USB-C cables, we do have a little mount at the back of the stand that's gonna help to put all the cables going in the same direction and keep a little bit more tidy as well. I wish that they had the same system, kind of like a hidden cable management situation back there. We do have a little space to hide and to cover all the cables that goes on the back of the monitor, but it would be nice to have that cable come together all the way to the back to keep a little bit more tidy and don't have any cable exposed because I'm still able to see on the back of my monitor. The base is super solid. It's very sleek. The way it sits on my desk, I like it a lot. Personally, I enjoy it to utilize that space and put some little desk accessories that it's a part of my daily process. So it's always in front of me. And of course, this monitor you are able to use horizontally or vertically as well. Now, let's take a look at the ports of this monitor. We got one headphone jack, two USB 3.1 downstream, one SD card reader, one USB Type-C, one USB Type-B, and two HDMI. Moving on to the display specifications, we have a 4K resolution in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, max resolution of 3840 by 2160, brightness of 400 nits, wide viewing angle of 178 degrees. One standout feature is the matte cold screen with anti-glare and anti-reflection and color range 1.07 billion. Video format support includes 444, 422, or 420. The monitor support various color gamuts catering to different needs, such as Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec. 709, DCI-P3, Display-P3, M-Book, Black and White, HDR, Calibration 1, 2, and 3, Custom, Paper Color Sync, and D-I-C-O-M. And my favorite settings that I use all the time for my video editing projects is the Rec. 709. As I shoot on my FX3, I use S-Log3. On the monitor, on my timeline, I convert to Rec. 709 as well. So the color has been amazing. Wireless hotkey puck. This third generation wireless puck, it's a game changer because allow us to control up to three monitors at once and it saves three different presets of colors. Lets you adjust brightness and has a handy function button to display your current monitor settings on the screen. The hotkey puck comes with two batteries, but I wish there was kind of like an internal battery that we are able to charge via USB-C. And now BenQ introduced the new Palette Master Ultimate the new calibration software. It provides accurate hardware calibrations faster and comes with an upgrade interface for simple steps and various custom settings. And if you don't understand the need or why you should be using the calibration tool, here's a very short but important explanation from my friend and professional photographer, Jadu. The idea with this is that the monitor doesn't know what room you're in. So it needs to know what is the ambient light that's gonna be influencing those colors. So as this is on the screen, it's sending out a signal to see what the ambient light is. And based on that ambient light, it's giving you red 
blue, green, and all the different colors. And it takes a couple of minutes for that process to happen, but at the end, you should have then the color accuracy that is probably the best. And the price for this monitor is $1,499. Final thoughts about this monitor. So for me, after editing videos for more than 10 years and I got to experiment and use a lot of monitors, this monitor has been the best that I've ever tried in my career and it's way more than I ever gonna need. For example, the colors, amazing, I can see every little detail in the image, especially in Rec. 709 for my videos in 4K. Now I was able to see the details and the color tones and everything come together, especially when I use the configuration on Rec. 709. Amazing. It's definitely a treat when you're editing to see those little details. The anti-glare is great, especially as an editor, we are always confined in dark spaces, but we do like to work in a bright, ambient in a bright space. So that came very handy for me as well, because when I work in my home office, open the windows, everything's bright, everything's white, bounce light all over the place, I have no problem with that. And my workflow has been just impeccable. Highly recommend, and especially if you have the money to invest, it's a great alternative for a long-term monitor. And I've never had the ability to edit in a 4K monitor as well, which is more than we need because not everyone is gonna be able to watch that on their devices or on their computers, but it's nice to see the details on the screen as I edit the project. I'm definitely spoiled after working on this monitor and now I don't know if I would ever be able to edit in a different monitor. And sometimes it's hard to show this in a video, it doesn't make justice. So if you have the ability to go check, test it out, I highly recommend so you can get a feel how it is for your eyes because it's color, brightness, sharpness, it's things that we are not able to actually see and represent in a very specific quality of detail on these videos on YouTube. But if you do have the ability to go and check one out, highly recommend. And this is just my videographer point of view, but I wanted to bring a little bit more of value and try to share with you a photographer point of view as well. So for that, I have my two friends and professional photographers and editors, Jadu and Raf. They're gonna share a little bit more about their experiences and what they like about this monitor. My favorite part is the hood, uh, and that's because it helps get the sun off the monitor and uh, the way I have it set up is, is actually they're almost direct sunlight, so that definitely helps, along with the amazing anti-glare, and uh, it really lets me see what's in front of me without having to battle different reflections and glare in my screen. So those are the two things for sure. So for me, color accuracy is number one. I am so obsessed with proper skin tones, and I spent a lot of time, even after the photo shoot, to try to make sure that the skin tones look really, really good. And in order for me to see that it looks really good, I need a monitor to showcase that to me. The matte finish, which is something that uh, Raf also spoke about, it's important in my studio because I do have window lights directly behind me. And so there is direct light hitting that. And so this matte finish that has been improved for this particular model as well, allows me not to have that influence of another light source hitting the screen and then maybe throwing me off when I'm editing images. When you edit, what's your profile that you use the most? Because most of the photos that I'm, you know, giving out are either going to be viewed on a monitor, a screen, rarely in print. It's usually web-based. So sRGB is usually the color space that I'm using so that I can clearly see that those colors will be reproduced. I hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comment down below if you have any question about this monitor. Subscribe for more reviews and I'll see you in the next one.